You guys have been asking for videos about color theory, and I've heard you. But so far, I've been intentionally avoiding talking about color because really I think that grayscale has to come first. But today's video is going to be about color, and in fact it's going to be about unifying your color palette, something that people naturally seem to have trouble with. So I've got this coffee cup and an apple. So I'll paint the apple red and the coffee cup blue. But what I've done here is more of a symbol of a coffee cup and a symbol of an apple. Because yes, an apple is red, but that red should have a lot more nuance to it. And sure, you could get a blue coffee cup, but it wouldn't simply be blue. There'd be all sorts of other colors mixed in there. So as an image, this might seem right, but could actually improve a lot if the palette was more unified. I had a professor at college that was really great and knew a lot about color, and he liked to say that if there was a color somewhere on your canvas, you had to put it somewhere else too. And that if you mixed each color into every other color, you'd end up with a unified palette. And at first this didn't make a lot of sense to me, but as I started learning more about rendering techniques and how light works, it started to connect. Because all too often, people forget about reflected color. So for instance, this coffee cup, it's pretty glossy. It might realistically have a lot of this red from the apple on the side. And I'll erase away a little bit to tone it down. So what I've got here is still a blue coffee cup, but it's got color reflected from the object next door. Additionally, it would probably have some of this ground color reflected on the bottom. So now is it a white coffee cup? Well, not really, it's still blue, but it's got some reflected light. You could say the same about the apple. It's likely that on top of the apple, there's probably some of the ground color reflected, maybe even a little of the blue mixing in from the neighboring object. And then the ground itself has probably picked up some of these colors as well, because as the light hits these objects, it bounces around. So I'll take some of this red and reflect it onto the ground. And I'll do the same with the blue. So already, what started as very primary colored objects look a lot more realistic. And I didn't even start with particularly intentional colors. These are just random red and random blue. If I had made a composition from the beginning with color in mind, it'd be even better. But it goes beyond just reflected light. There are a lot of easy ways that Photoshop can help you tint an image to make the colors match a bit. So for instance, on the top of my layer stack, I can use an adjustment layer called the Photo Filter. And there's a bunch of different tones you can use, warming filters and cooling filters. And then you adjust their density. So at the bottom you have no effect, and at the other end you have extremely colored. And you can achieve the same effect in a lot of different ways in Photoshop, but the end result is adding a little bit of a color cast to the entire canvas. And this has an amazing way of unifying any of the colors that were already there. There's a big difference between these two palettes. And as you saw, it didn't really take all that long to create. All it took was an understanding that light bounces around. And so if there's a color on something, it's probably on its neighbor a little bit. And if you put a color anywhere in your composition, make sure to use it elsewhere. If you do this, you'll have a more unified palette before you know it. And as a last little touch, it never hurts to put a little bit of a tint in Photoshop just to bring it all together. So if you've got any other easy ways to make your color palette more unified, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys.